What's up guys, Tarek here, welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, but um, I figured what better way to come back after kind of taking a short break from everything than to do an After Effects tutorial. Now today we're going to be doing something that uh, has been covered on a couple of YouTube channels before, but not in the way that I'm going to be doing it. Now, notes if you want a smoother version of this effect, what you're going to need to get is trap code sound keys, but I'm not going to be using any plugins for this tutorial because I know not everybody has the means of, a, of acquiring um, plugins. So without further ado, let's get into this um, audio react tutorial. So, Okay, so first you're going to need a song. You need to import a song and if you have a logo, go ahead and import a logo. So let's go ahead and do that logo part. So file import, we're going to go to desktop. You can't see it right now because it's uh, solid black, but anyway, let's go ahead and make a new composition. I'm going to call this audio spec cut. You can call it whatever you want, but that doesn't change what we're going to be doing. And for now, we're going to set it to 15 seconds, and we're going to make the frame rate 30 FPS because my computer shit, and we're going to make it 720p. So we're going to hit OK. Uh, actually, before we go any further, further, figure out the length of your song, so 4:27:15. I'm going to change my compositions to settings to that, so I'm going to set it to 4, 27, 15, and we're going to hit OK just to make sure we have it the same length of our song. And if you're doing it the way that I'm doing, you're going to have to do that every time. So note that unless you set your length to like 30 minutes, you're probably going to have to change the length every time. So. Let's go ahead and get right into the actual tutorial. So, okay, so we're going to create a new composition. We're going to call this the BG Solid, which stands for background. And we're going to go get a gradient. So we're going to type in gradient ramp. Gradient ramp. And we're going to drag and drop that right onto the BG. So what we're also going to do is swap the colors. And we're going to make it a radial ramp. And we're going to move that to the middle. And we're just going to drag this over, make it bigger. And we're going to make it blend with the original. Oh, not ramp scatter. Blend with the original just a little bit. And we're going to change the color from that to like a blue, like a not, not a super hardcore blue, but maybe something like that. Um, then we're going to go ahead and import or drag and drop our logo onto the actual composition itself. Scale that down to about right there. And we're going to make a new shape. So we're going to take the ellipse tool right here. And we're going to turn on title action safe. Which we're going to try to line that up. By the way, title action safe is you click on this little crosshair looking thing right here. And then you click the top one and that'll turn that on for you. So we're going to go ahead and try to line that up with the middle as best we can. And we're going to click down, hold control alt shift and drag that out. Just like that. It's about where it reaches the edges. You know what? Let's make that a little smaller. About there. We're going to drag that behind our logo. And we're going to change the colors a bit. I think I'm going to go ahead and make that super small. You don't have to have an outline. I typically have an outline. I don't know why. Let's change it to 5, actually. And we're going to change the other color to, like, gray or something. I don't know. That, that works fine. Just gray. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, you can line up your logo a bit better if you want. I think I'm just going to go ahead and set it to there. Um... And now we're going to go ahead and get into the audio spectrum part. I promise we'll get into the good stuff here in a second. I'm sure you guys know this part already, but we'll get into the real, real react in just a moment. So let's go ahead and import or not import. Let's go and drag our song to the bottom. It doesn't really matter where you place it. Actually, it, it's just we're going to leave it there. But um, we're going to go ahead and make another new solid. I'm going to call this one audio spectrum one and then we're gonna go to our effects and presets and type in audio spec 
or you don't even have to go that far. You just have to go to audio spit. And it's right there. So drag and drop that. And we're going to set the audio layer to Stabby and Ed Air. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. And just you're just going to set it to your song, pretty much. And uh, make sure that you have... I think that's it for now. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're good. Make sure you have it set to your audio layer. Okay. So now we're also going to drag these out to where they meet the composition size. So we're actually going to set that to zero. And we're going to set that to... 1280 and now we're gonna make a mask around it so we're gonna take the we're gonna take the ellipse tool again select our audio spectrum layer line it up the best we can again so I'm gonna get it to about right there and you're just gonna drag it out to where it fits and you can try to line it up if you want I think that that's pretty good and we're gonna set the path right here to mask one also, before we go any further, make sure you set your mask to none, otherwise it's going to kind of cut off at some parts, and then you're also going to set that behind your uh, audio spectrum, or behind your shape layer one, so go ahead and uh, make sure that's done. So when you scrub through, you should see something like that. I suggest you change your frequencies to 10 and 500. I found out that that's a pretty good that's pretty good for uh, what most people do and you can turn up the frequency bands if you want that that trap nation look or you can keep them low and kind of figure out what you want uh, I think I'm just for the sake of the tutorial I think I'm just gonna go ahead and turn up the thickness or whatever and kind of mess around just a little bit turn on turn down that Turn it to side B, Oops, side B, side B, there we go, you know what, turn down the thickness, I don't think it needs to be at 20, that's ridiculous, but yeah, you can just mess around and figure out what you want, uh, I think that's where I'm going to set it for now, just because, there's also other settings for this, like you can set it to analog lines or whatever, but uh, I normally just leave it at digital whenever I'm making things like this, so, yeah, since it's just an example. Alright, so now you can change the colors. I think I'm just going to make it, I guess, dark gray. I don't know. Oh yeah, it doesn't do dark gray unless you go to this side. Or it, It'll do black if you go to like, just barely where the black starts. It can't actually be black for some reason. I don't know why. It just doesn't work. But you could set it to something like that. So I think I'll go ahead and go with that. You know what? And I'll, I'll go ahead and make more frequency bands. Just because... It, it kind of looks better that way, so we're actually going to set that to 20. That's much better. Okay, so now that we've got that part set up, now let's get into the part that everybody wants. So first, actually, let me line that up just a bit better. That's that's good, I guess. I don't know. Scale it down, maybe. By like 28. Yeah, that'll work. Close enough. Okay, so... Now that we have our audio spectrum made and when we scrub through it we can see it, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get into the thing I wanted to show you guys the most. And that is um, turning audio into keyframes, which this is going to come in handy here in a second and you're going to see why. So we're going to go ahead and right click our song, go to keyframe assistant and go to convert to audio keyframes. And what that's going to do is as you can see it's analyzing the audio. And once it's done, when you click the graph editor and select your audio amplitude that it makes, you can see these range of keyframes, which is actually your song in keyframes. A quick tip before we go any further, you might want to delete left and right channel just so you don't get mixed up on what you're doing. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you have them or not. It doesn't affect what we're doing, but I just delete them because we're not using them anyway. Also. If you're wanting to it, it to react to high frequencies, they're actually normally down here. If you're wanting it to react to low frequencies, they're normally up here. And kick snare is about somewhere around uh, mid to top. So just keep that in mind whenever you're using this effect. So yeah, just remember that part. Anyway, let's keep going. So now that we got our keyframes, we're going to do a couple of things to... Uh, 
to our images here. So we're going to make a pre-composition pre out of these two. And we're going to move all attributes and call this logo. And we're going to go to our effects and presets and go to glow. And we're going to go to bulge. And you're going to see why in a second, but we're going to move the bulge up here actually. And we're going to turn this all the way down for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it to where the radius lines up with the circle. And i stretch it out. Alright, so now we're good. Let's turn down the bulge height to... <laughs> let's turn that to zero. Alright, so now we're going to go back to our audio amplitude and we're going to hit E. And we're going to go... We're going to click the uh, drop down arrow right here to get to our slider. Now we're going to add what's called an expression to the slider. Basically it's like the coding with an After Effects. So you're going to alt click this stopwatch right here, this blue glowing stopwatch. And you're going to change what this box says. So you're going to type in linear parentheses value 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 close parentheses. Now this is the vanilla version of this expression without adding the zeros which are the values uh, this this basically has no effect so what we're gonna do is the first two values I believe are the keyframes and the second two values are the changes that are gonna be made when those keyframes are activated so we're gonna choose a range of keyframes I'm gonna choose low frequencies we're gonna go with um, let's see 40 it goes all the way up to 58 so we're gonna go ahead and choose 45 and 55 and we're going to go from 0 to 0 0.2 so this one is actually going to be set for our bulge effect Oop. our bulge effect so what you're going to do is you're going to alt click the bulge height and we're going to do what's called pick whipping or parenting and you're just going to take this little swirly right here that comes up whenever you alt click and slide it or drag it over to the slider and now these two are linked so every time that it hits that range of keyframes and see if I can scrub through it and find a spot where it happens right right there you just saw it basically if you scrub through it you'll find little spots where it bulges out I'll, I'll show a preview of the song here in a little bit where it comes up the most so um, now whenever it hits those range of keyframes in fact let's go ahead and lower the range just so you can see it a bit better uh, let's lower it to like 35, I don't know. Screw it. See, now you can see it even more. But whenever it hits that, that range of keyframes... Here, I'll play it through later. When it hits that range of keyframes, it'll bulge. That's, that's, the, that's the idea of that. So, also, you can do this with any effect that has values. Like, you can do it with this glow that I was talking about. So let's say we wanted it to have a reaction with that glow as well. Well, you'd actually have to make another um, another audio amplitude. So just control D and go back to your effects, both channels, and change. You're basically going to change the expression. So I'm going to go from I'm going to go from maybe 80, or you know, let's go from 80 to zero, or 80 to 50, or something like that. And then we're going to leave that like that, and then we're going to alt click the radius, and we're going to go ahead and drag and drop that up to this slider. And by the end of it, you should have something like this.
So I hope you guys enjoyed my little tutorial. If you guys want one with uh, plugins, which looks a lot better, um, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely get around to it. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see y'all later.